Hello and welcome to Monday's Reflection, uh, the start of our week of reflections as we journey through Holy Week. Uh, this year we're going to do something a little bit differently in the sense of we're not necessarily going to look at what Jesus did on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and so on. But following on from yesterday, where it was Palm Sunday, we're going to be thinking actually about Jesus' last few hours and then his death and his crucifixion. And so today we're going to be thinking about the arrest of Jesus after he had been praying uh, in, the, in the garden. So I want us to read from Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 53. And I'm reading a translation by the theologian and author uh, and pastor Tom Wright. This is how Tom Wright puts it. Jesus headed as usual for the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you won't come into the trial. He then withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down to pray. Father, he said, if you wish it, please take this cup away from me, but it must be your will, not mine. An angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. By now he was in agony and he prayed very fervently and his sweat became like clots of blood falling on the ground. Then he got up from praying and came, them, came to the disciples and found them asleep because of sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He said to them. Get up and pray so that you won't come into the trial. While he was still speaking, a, a crowd appeared. The man named Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, are you going to betray, betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Jesus' Jesus's followers saw what was about to happen. Master, they said, shall we go in with the swords? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Enough of that, said Jesus, and healed the ear with a touch. Then Jesus spoke to the arresting party, the chief priests, the temple guards and the elders. Anyone would think I was a brigand, he said. Seeing you coming out like this with swords and clubs. Every day I've been in the temple with you and you never laid hands on me. But your moment has come at last. And so has the power of darkness. Great words that give us clarity and understanding of what was happening as Jesus headed towards the cross. And I, I really value Tom Wright's uh, translation of those passages from Luke. It, it gives a new understanding and a new meaning for me. I wonder if you've seen the TV program Gladiators. Maybe you saw it the first time round, or maybe you've come to it anew and afresh. Personally, I saw it the first time round, and the second time round with the reboot of Gladiators, uh, my wife and I have been watching it with our two children. And we love Gladiators. You will remember all the different games that are in Gladiators. You've got Duel with the, the pugil, pugil sticks. You've got Hang Tough, where they're hanging on uh, for dear life. There's the gauntlet where they have to try and knock off knock over some of these huge gladiators and then right at the end you have the eliminator you have the the referee with the famous phrase gladiators ready contestants ready and all of those kind of things in gladiators the the tv program you've got these men and women who are at the physical peak of their fitness who are competing and they look so tough so strong that any trial that they face they're just going to knock over so easily but then you get the gladiator that comes alongside them who makes them look like a school child they are so huge they have muscles where where i didn't even know muscles existed and and so you've got these contestants these athletes themselves come up against the gladiators and for them that is a huge trial now, the definition of a trial is a test, usually over a limited period of time, 
to discover how effective or suitable something or someone is. And in Gladiators, they, I think they're pleased that it's only maybe for 30 seconds or a minute. It's a trial over a limited period of time. And then right at the end of that uh, game show, you have the Eliminator, where there are no Gladiators for that, but the contestants go head to head to see who can win through the obstacle course. And right at the end, you have the famous Travelator where they have to run it run up it the wrong way to try and get to the top and to swing through and break the paper and say that they've won uh, that obstacle course. All of that show is a huge trial and they are trying to see, to discover how effective or suitable they are in getting through to the next round. The Bible reading that I just read to us from Luke's gospel shows Jesus uh, in an extreme trial. Jesus is in the garden and he's praying and he asks God to, to take this cup away, but not his will, uh, but God's will. You see, Jesus is asked, what is this cup? Jesus knows that the cup is a cup of trial. He knows that he's going to get arrested and then he's going to get beaten and then he's going to get ridiculed and he's going to have an awful uh, few hours. And then on the end of that, uh, right at the end of that huge trial where he's then passed from Pilate to Herod and back again, that he's going to then have this crucifixion. And he will have known that crucifixion was the worst way to die. The physical pain would have been immense. And all of that is going on when Jesus says, may this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours. And, and that is extreme trial and extreme pressure, to th say the least. And because of that, Luke reminds us that, that Jesus sweated clots, drops of, of blood. Now, Luke, uh, who we know has a, a medical background, throws in that detail to show us the extremeness of what Jesus was facing. And apparently there's evidence to show that if a human being, if a person suffers the most extreme, dream trial imaginable that that can in, in very uh, limited and extreme cases cause that person to sweat drops of blood. Now I don't know about you, I've been in many trials in my life as I'm sure you have but I've never sweated uh, drops of blood. Some of the trials that I've experienced have been really painful, have been really difficult, have been really hard. Yet as tough as they've been, they've not even come close to the trial that Jesus is facing because I've not gone as far as sweating uh, drops of blood. And then on top of that, Jesus has the spiritual uh, trial. See, it's not just physical, it's spiritual and emotional. But the spiritual trial is because Jesus knew that, that through his death and resurrection, this is how God was going to reconcile the whole world to himself. This was, we often refer to Jesus as the saviour of the world. This was how Jesus was going to save the world. That is a huge spiritual weight that Jesus was carrying. And so because of that, this was not just to, to draw all Israel to God. It was to draw the whole of humanity, you and I, down through every generation post Jesus' death and resurrection that's what this was for to take on the whole sin of the world that's a, a massive spiritual trial that Jesus was going through and was willing to go through saying that it was God's will and not his own what we notice about Jesus if we go back to the definition that I said about the trial Jesus was supremely effective he was wonderfully suitable for the trial that was ahead of him. There was no one else, either then or since in all of human history, that was as suitable and ready for the trial that Jesus went through for you and me. What are the trials that you face? What are the trials that you face? What are the trials that you may be facing right now? I can remember recovering from major surgery. That's probably one of the, the most physical trials that I've been through. 
the recovery took many months and I can remember after a period of time I my wife saying to me okay you you need to now try walking again and it was a case of uh, allowing her to help me put my shoes on to to go out of the front door and to just walk to the the nearest lamppost to our house and back again and I can remember sitting down after that first walk that was maybe oh 20 yards if that sitting back down completely exhausted and and sleeping for the rest of the afternoon it was that much of a as a of a physical trial and then after doing that for a few days then trying to the next lamppost and back and slowly but surely with the help of my wife and my children I built up my strength and each step was a trial but it slowly started to to see results that saw me walk into the end of the road or or round the block but it was a massive physical trial it really took its toll out of me both physically emotionally because I I was frustrated because I wanted to be able to do more spiritually because uh, I felt a bit distant from God in those moments as well but even though as tough as that was it was nothing compared to what Jesus went through from him being arrested to when he was crucified on a cross and he did all of that for all of us for all of humanity as you face trials in life may you know that Jesus is with you that he went through the biggest of all trials because he is supremely uh supremely uh, suitable and effective at what he had to do and he did that for you and for me and that says to me that while he went through the ultimate of all trials that what I go through he understands he knows what it is that I, I go through and, and therefore he he can walk with me and he can help me and he can encourage me because he's, he, he's not somebody who, who's distant and doesn't understand what I'm experiencing He knows it because Jesus has faced a huge trial. But the wonder of all of this is that Jesus came out the other side of his trial because we are post-Easter Sunday people. We are resurrected people, as it's often said. And so we knew that Jesus didn't stay dead, that he's alive and been alive forevermore. And as we journey this Holy Week, uh, we can't come to each of these different themes ignoring the fact that we know that Jesus rose from the dead and you see so Jesus came through his trial and that gives me huge comfort because it says if Jesus came through the the trial to beat all trials then whatever I'm going through Jesus can pull me through my old college principal when I was training for ministry had a friend who said his favorite words in the bible were and it came to pass and I that's always stuck with me I probably heard that I don't know 25 27 years ago and it has stuck with me that no matter what I go through with Jesus it will come to pass and it comes to pass because Jesus has gone through the trial to beat all trials so may you know that may you know wherever you are in life right now however tough it may be may you know that Jesus will pull you through May you know that Jesus understands and may that give you the strength that you need to keep enduring. Maybe you're you're not in a trial period at the moment. Praise God for that. May you look back on your life and may you be able to see and bear witness to how Jesus has brought you through all those difficult moments in life. But may all of us know that whatever we face, whether today or in the future, Jesus doesn't leave us on our own. And the fact that he endured a a horrendous trial, he understands and knows and will pull us through whatever it is that we face in life. So let's pray together at the end of this first reflection. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the way that you endured your trial for my benefit. Thank you that you did that so that I could have my freedom, so that I could know what it is to be a child of the living God. But Father, you know that I sometimes face trials and those trials are difficult. And Lord, may all of us, when we face whatever it is that we go through, 
May we know that we're not alone, that, that you are with us, that your son Jesus uh, is, is an example and never walks away from us and shows us what it, what it is to endure. And that because he came out the other side, one day we will do too. And may we experience your love and your power strengthening and upholding us every single day of our lives. We pray in the name through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, friend. Thanks for spending the time to listen and start this journey with us uh, this week. And I look forward to seeing you soon. And tomorrow evening, sorry, tomorrow morning, there'll be another video reflection that is released. But also to say that tomorrow evening, eight o'clock at our Perry Street location, we're having a time of prayer following on from watching a short film called God's Chisel, which is really powerful. And it shows us how God loves us so much, how we're his masterpiece. And that is why Jesus came. So I hope to see you there. But have a great and a blessed week. And may you know that Jesus is with you. Bye bye.